Comfey, Focus Energy, Arcaladon, and Clear Amulet Glastriere are three Pokemon that were on a team that ended up ranking 75th in the second global challenge with a final rating of 1748. We're going to be trying out this team and seeing how well it can perform. This is an insane setup team. The idea of the team is you have the Sableye and the Comfey. With the Prankster Sableye, you can set up the screens and provide more support if Sableye does last around on the field with Taunt to prevent setup and Quash for speed control. While the Comfey, a really important factor because floor healing gaining some extra recovery on top of the screens make it really hard to break through the setup Pokemon. You have a few different ones here with the Sword Stance Wellspring Ogre Pond, a very solid Mon. We have the Scope Lens Focus Energy Arcaladon, where with the Scope Lens and after a Focus Energy, it is a 100% guaranteed chance to get a critical hit. So you can fire out those Draco Meteors, not have to worry about any special attack drops, and Flash Cannon will also crit as well. And we also have the Glare Moltres, which is able to set up Nasty Plot. And with that Berserk, really pairs well with that Comfey with the Floor Healing option. And then finally, the Glastriar, which is able to really break through some of the trickering teams out there, some of the snow teams that have been really popping up recently, and is able to do so much damage without having to worry about Intimidates so with that clear amulet under screens and with the floor healing support, able to break through teams even without a speed advantage in Trick Room. If you'd like to check out the details of the team and the creator, they'll be linked in the description down below. Articuno, Ninetales, Alolan, the... Blood Moon, Ursaluna, Entei, Incineroar, and Urshifu. No Trick Room, Blood Moon, Ursaluna. Is it Tailwind, or are they just relying on Aurora Veil to bulk their attacks? Uh, interesting decision, really. Otherwise, I do like the Sableye a lot. Who am I partnering with? I do really like, if I position it correctly, Glastriar does fantastic against this team. If I, again... Although the Entei playing with Sacred Fire Burns is never a pleasant idea, so maybe put that on the back burner. Hmm. Although I really, really like last year against this team, I think in general. I think I'm gonna go with our Caledon lead though. Mainly because I feel like if they lead something, Entei would actually be a really big threat. So I think they would probably want to try to Entei. I don't think I'm going to bring the Galarian Moltres because even at plus two, I see really hard time trying to break through Articuno. The Urshifu could be a bit of an issue. And then, yeah, it's just, I feel like against Incineroar and Entei, it's going to be a little bit hard. Like, I can deal enough damage to Entei depending on its set. If it's Assault Vest, it's a little bit of an issue. And if they get Roar Veil up, it's not great. Okay, they lead Entei and Incineroar, which is actually really ideal. Okay. As I do lead our Caledon plus the Sableye right off the bat, we'll be able to get a Reflect up immediately, which is fantastic, and Focus Energy up with the Arcaladon. So we will go for that a Focus Energy and Reflect immediately. They might double in the Sableye. If they fake out, that's fine. I get a free Stamina boost, so I take the attacks even better. So they aren't going to fake out. They're probably going to Parting Shot the Arcaladon most likely and Sacred Fire the Sableye. Yep, perfect. Takes quite a bit of damage. Life Orb Entei, which is an interesting pick, and Focus Energy. I really, really want to get rid of Entei. If I get rid of Entei, I'm in a good spot, so that's definitely going to be my priority. They go for a Flare Blitz. Going to knock out the Sableye? Okay, so we only get Reflect this game, but not too shabby. I would have obviously liked Light Screen up for if it is back Articuno, but we'll take it for sure. I'm going out into my Comfey because I can use the debate hits potentially. Uh, they might try to double up in a Comfey this time, so I'm just going to go for a Draco Meteor into the Entei and Protect, because they might not expect to Protect on the Comfey. So we're going to go for a Draco Meteor into the Entei and Protect our Comfey. Let's see what they decide to do. Is it going to be the Flare Blitz plus a Draco... Uh, oh, the Sacred Fire actually to our Caledon, so... All right. I'm going to boost, so I do get a plus one. They take more life up recoil, which is actually really nice. Draco Meteor going to come out. Guaranteed critical hit onto the Entei. Picks up the knockout, which is awesome. Because that is one of the biggest threats of last year. Just eliminated. So, fantastic. And Parting Shot doesn't matter. Because we don't care if uh, Parting Shot goes down in our Caledon. Because we're guaranteed to crit. As long as we didn't get knocked off, we always have that 100% chance to crit. So, let's see who they're bringing out next. Urshifu... Is a very high potential option. 
it is her shifu probably dark i think if you are trying to break through it yep they are weak to come though so they do have to watch out for that we're gonna see incinor come back in i'm just gonna go for a probably a floral healing and a flash cannon is super safe i don't really see a problem with that i could drain and kiss our shifu but if it's sash it doesn't matter i also want to make sure that our kaladon's out of range of terror dark wicked blow so we will go for the floral healing into the arcaladon we'll go for a flash cannon into our shifu and we're gonna see a terra come out so are you terra poison terra dark terra steel Ooh, i was not expecting that one all right that's actually gonna be able to take my attacks even better i haven't seen terra steel darker she felt than like maybe a choice scarf one but let's see we will heal ah they have iron head that's not good okay I think he actually takes that really well, though. Actually, that was actually a lot less damage than I expected. Flash Cannon going to come out on Urshifu. Not a bad amount of damage. I wonder if Draco Meteor would have two-shotted. Oh, well. Knockoff. Ooh, so they do know. They do know. All right. So, Scope Lens gone. It's now down to, I believe, a 50% chance. Okay. I guess this is still okay, though, because I can Draining Kiss. I think I'm going to chip the Incineroar for Glastriere, and I'm just going to go for another Draco Meteor into their Shifu. If it's Iron Head, I am assuming it's Scarf. We're going to see the Earth Shifu retreat, so something's coming in. Going to be the Ursa Luna, which doesn't appreciate the Draco Meteor, so I'm okay with this. Pretty happy, actually. I get some pretty big damage. They might be parting shotting, though, to get a reposition, but I will get some recovery. Okay. Draco Meteor, do we get a 50%? Nice, we do get a 50%, which is beautiful. And Parting Shot once again, so. <laughs> uh, okay, our sheep are gonna come back in. Glastier is gonna have to do some hard carrying. Do I wanna Terra to Grass, or do I wanna save the Terra? I feel like I wanna save Terra Water Glastier. Terrawater Glass Gear seems really strong. I think I'm going to call Mind, actually, with my Comfey. And I'm going to go for a Draco Meteor into the Ursa Luna. Yeah, I'm just going to send it. Because they're going to Iron Head once again. That's acceptable. Okay. Oh, that's a really bad flinch, actually. Draco Meteor. Do we get the 50? <laughs> nice two coin flips we got him which is actually really big because we didn't have light screen up so that was a big one and urshifu most likely is actually choice i am assuming it's choice scarf on this team uh especially with that iron head so now they're locked into iron head so we should be able to win the game i think with uh glass Trier. and Sin are going to come back in but uh not that big of a deal and i guess uh i mean we could still lose because high horsepower is not 100 percent accurate but uh, we will go for a draining kiss. We're going to tar down the Incineroar, I suppose. And we're just going to Draco Meteor the Incineroar. So we'll just get a little bit of chipping in Incineroar. Again, we're just trying to focus on Glass Air. Let's see. Iron Head. Make out going to come out. Yep. Training kiss with triage is more uh it's the same priority plus three with fake out. It just depends on the D speed tier of the users so iron head gonna be able to pick up the knock on comfy because comfy was faster than Incineroar naturally with the plus three priority from triage was able to outspeed fake out so i was able to get in a, a bit of chip into that Incineroar. now we bring out our glass share and can we hit a high horsepower into the Incineroar? we could also get flinched a bunch of times but we have two really good walls so we have so many chances even if we don't get another crit uh i do like our odds significantly here especially since we still also have that reflect so we will bring out the terra water on the glass air and let's see if we can pick up a final knockout onto these two let's see iron head yeah they have to be choice locked i think at this point or they could have just been going for super effective damage in against uh glass air but Let's see. <laughs> Third Draco Meteor. Three for three on crits. Oh my goodness. Our Caledon cannot be stopped. It doesn't care if it doesn't have its lens. It's going to be able to fire off these accurately. 
It's still Caesar weak. This flare is going to come out into the glass air, but that does no damage whatsoever. And high horse power will finish off the Incineroar. Felt like it was the most powerful mod that it could do damage because it had knockoff onto Glass Shear. So we pick up the knockout into Incineroar, able to get a boost, and now Urshifu. Really, really unlikely to win the game. I'm just going to keep spamming flash cannons and. Well, yeah. I'm not going for heavy summon Urshifu. I'm just going to keep going for high horse power until I actually land it. And we are able to secure the game. So. Got a little bit lucky. It needed to with the plus two, but uh, it was, again, a bit of a passive one here. I think I needed to reflect turn one. Was able to get the Entei eliminated right away, which is fantastic. Didn't have to play any burn chances, which is great. A Comfe was in a good spot until a Terra Steel or Shifu. <laughs> but the Arcaladon was able to come in really clutch with those Draco Meteors. Articuno, Ninetales... Wellspring Ogre Pond, the Tornadus, Hisuian Arcanine, Decidueye. Decidueye is kind of the outlier here. I'm like, why is there Decidueye? <laughs> I guess they just like Decidueye. Uh, Glacier is really strong here. Arcaladon can put in a ton of work. I really do like Arcaladon. Mm, I feel like Arcanine should lead here because it's good into Glare and Moltres and the last year so i'm gonna lead sableye or caladon i think which is actually really strong last year set up for the back and comfe is pretty good our caladon and last year are both amazing if i get rid of our caladon i feel so good about my pos or if i get rid of arcanine on their side i feel so strong about my position and i think our caladon is one of the best pokemon to take on the arcanine i'm trying to debate if it's worth if they lead nine tails, is it worth them getting a roar veil for me guaranteeing the screens or risk like getting knocked out? If I get if I go for a taunt and then they double up my Sableye and I lose Sableye without getting screens because I think I do want screens. I think screens for me are way more beneficial than screens for them because a glass year is still two shotting pretty much everything on your team. It looks like. Maybe even one shotting in some cases. And the second one is I have a crit or Caladon, and crit or Caladon doesn't care about your Aurora Veil. So I think uh in that case, I think it's better to just set up the I think it's just better to set up the Arcaladon for the win. But I think Reflect Turn One is probably the best call. I'm trying to figure out what they lead. Arcanine Ninetales, maybe is a consideration. We'll find out. Gonna be the lead of Ninetales Articuno. Okay, so they led the snow mode immediately. Which I'm okay with. As I can go for the light screen. And I could go Articuno. The question is how much damage do I want to take? Because I even if Articuno comes out, the, uh, the left slot is taking so much damage from blizzards. That I think it's worth just setting up the light screen. And getting the Aurora Bell up. Or to focus energy on their Aurora Veil. Because, again, I crit through and I don't care about the Aurora Veil. Ninetales going to retreat, too. So, no Aurora Veil for them is actually really nice. Oh, we're going to see Ogre Pond come out. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Looks like they're going for the Terrorize Blizzard immediately. I'm a little bit skeptical on how much damage I'm taking with our Caladon. But this our Caladon is max special defense. <laughs> so, we'll see. The light screen gonna come out. Focus energy. Alright, how much is the blizzard? Oh, they ice beamed instead. Not what I expected. Okay. That's so much easier to deal with. Okay, cool. I'm gonna reflect. And I'm just gonna Draco Meteor the Ogre Pond. Because Ogre Pond can read the. Actually, no, Ogre Pond can't redirect the floor healing, so we're comfortable there. So I should probably start targeting the Articuno, actually. A uh, bit of a mistake there, but it's okay. Heavy Cudgel, gonna crit through my Sableye. I don't really care. It might have just gone down anyway. Like, I'm okay with uh, the Sableye going down. Let's see. Draco Meteor. We're fast in Articuno. I was not expecting that one. Barely missed a knockout on Ogre Pond. All right. Ice Beam gonna come out with the Tear Ice. I'm really surprised they didn't go for Blizzard, but maybe they were fearing the, su the random sunny day on the Sableye. That does a lot, actually. We'll get Stamina Boost. But 
Yeah, we can go out into our comfy. All right, our Caledon, you need to do a lot of work, my friend. A lot of work. I could call a mind if I want to, but flow healing is just super safe. We go for a flash cannon into the Articuno. We still have that lights. We have both screens up, which is a huge benefit. Flash cannon, I don't think knocks out Articuno, and we have to deal with the <laughs> snow cloak. So that's something I'm not exactly looking forward to, but let's find out. Ivy Cudgel into the Comfey. Come on, man. Flash cannon. Look, I know I'm critting my the opponent, but these crits are 100% guaranteed. Hey, okay, Ice Beam. They double the Comfey. Ah, that's so unfortunate, that crit. I think I would have been able to tank both just fine and been in a really good spot. Granted, it's still not an awful position, but it could have been really, really ideal, you know? We're going out into our Glastriere. I'm clicking Heavy Slam into the Articuno. I'm going to protect the... Or Caledon, because Ice Beam is doing so much damage that I don't... Like, if they follow me... I don't know if they'll follow me this turn. I think they might want to get damage because if I just double attack, they lose both Pokemon. Unless they want to gamble the Snow Cloak anyway. So I feel like they're probably just going to throw off attacks. But we'll see. Uh, that's the problem with screens. Crits. <laughs> but let's see if we can power through. I do think we have some... We have good mons out right now that can finish the end game. I'm really worried about like how the final is going to work out. We protect. We have cudgel. We have the snow defense. We have to reflect up. So doesn't matter. Ice beam going to come out. Okay. Heavy slam does connect with the Articuno. Picks up the knockout Articuno. So that's an amazing knockout for me. So Articuno is eliminated. Alright. I'm a bit worried about his Sui Arcanine, although defense boost plus I don't know, it's tricky for them to actually break through the Arcaladon. Last year is a huge threat too. Ninetales gonna come out. Do they have Encore or are they gonna try to get a Roar Veil? I think I just double up the Ninetales slot with Heavy Slam. Plus Flash Cannon. We know that they can't tear anymore. So just go for the Nine tails. A crit flash cannon will knock out. I'm pretty sure the plus one heavy slam would knock out, even with the snow defense boost. They go for a spiky shield too, so that actually will probably affect this. Oh, they do have encore. Yeah, okay, perfect. Well, it's not ideal, but at least the heavy slam is going to be able to pick up the knockout into. I kind of wish I failed that protect because that protect was not doing anything. But there is a reason why I doubled the nine tails this turn was to get rid of this. Uh, it is focus sash. Okay. Hmm. Snow stops, which means I don't have a defense boost anymore, but they can't get a Aurora Veil. Mm, who are their bigger threats? I don't know who's in the back, but Arcanine is very, very likely. I I'd be shocked if there is no Arcanine. I think my play is always just to take the knock on the Ninetales, though, with high horsepower. And... Just, I guess I'm locked into Protect for two turns, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Because their plays are like, what? Swap out an Arcanine for one of these slots, which they didn't. Are they going to lock me into... Um, are they going to lock me into... Mo <laughs> Stop. <laughs> three for three. Are you serious? Okay. They didn't lock me in, though. Special attack drop doesn't matter. Stamina boost is actually really important for the upcoming... High horsepower into nine tails. I went for high horsepower because it it covered an Arcanine switch, but also like uh, if I want to be locked into a move, is probably high horsepower for the end game. But let's see who their last is. I can't believe they crit me three times. The city UI. Okay. I don't go down. I'm pretty sure because I have screens. <laughs> At least unless they double up, which is fine. I don't see how they're breaking Dark Caledon. But yeah, we'll, we'll protect here. And go for the... Well, we are on court into that protect. We do see the Ivy Cudgel. Oh, I thought they crit me again, realistically. I actually did. Oh, no. 
Well, we're going to find out together if uh, our Kaladon can 1v2 de this end game. I'm just going to Draco Meteor the Decidueye. This Ogre Pond is just giving me boost at the end of the day, so it's not a super big deal. Mm, I guess I had to protect that turn. <laughs> uh, last year, health would have been so huge there because they would have not been able to set up. Surprised they didn't follow me because this gives me another stamina boost. They're really not doing that much damage. Okay. Break a meter connect. We're also faster than Decidueye, which is awesome. Huge amount of damage to Decidueye. And this is Spirit Chuckle. Spirit Chuckle. How much does it do? We do have two stamina boosts, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. That did nothing. <laughs> that did nothing. Can't escape, but this was the last. Okay. Light screen gone. We will flash cannon now so we don't miss. And we knock out both anyway. I think we should be in the clear. I don't want to say yeah because this ogre pond still has an out. They have to get the targets right. Who am I flash cannoning? They're just going to go aggressive though. Ivy cudgel. All right. If they got two Ivy cudgel crits, it was over. If they had two Ivy cudgel crits, it was over. But you know what? I was hoping they would have get all these critical hits. So the city I goes down while spring ogre pond by itself. If they got two Ivy cudgel crits, it was over. But there was really nothing I could really do about that. And they already got so many crits. I was hoping that they just wouldn't crit the final two times. And yeah, they are not getting the crits. So our Kaladon able to clean up this end game. Crazy to focus energy. Our Kaladon putting in so much work. Knocking out the Ogre Pond. The Decidui. Even though we got Encore trapped for a bit, like it was really good. Also, no, his and Arcanine was crazy because they really did not bring good answers to Glastrier. But we take those. I mean, even if it was his and Arcanine in the back, like it was easier for my probably my uh Iron Caledon to beat their team. I think last year would have been a lot less useful, but it like fainted anyway, because <laughs> too many Ivy Cudgel crits, but we take this. Blood Remain, a Great Tusk, Iron Bundle, a Bomb of Snow, Dragon Knight, King Gambit. Is this Nick Navarre's Portland Top 8 Regionals team from way back? Like in the 2023 season, I think it was Reg. Was it Reg B or Reg C? It was Reg C, I think. Really? Huh. Okay, then. Eh. Those Choice Specs Bundle. Oh, boy. All right, let's go with Sable. I get the screens for sure. Glastrier is actually really good in this. I do want to bring Glastrier. I think Glastrier is fantastic against this team. Mm. Comfey and back and then I guess our Caledon for the Dragonite. It's going to be a bit of a tough one. They actually have like pretty good tools. Uh, Blizzard, Aurora Veil, vale, like a Choice Specs gold, like Choice Specs Iron Bundle is going to do a lot of damage. Uh, what was the Flutter main actually? Unless I'm mistaking sets, because if I remember right, it's Choice Specs Bundle with Helping Hand a Bomb of Snow. We can Gamut Flutter Main, which is fine. We do lead our Glastrier plus our Sableye. I think it's, um, okay, Booster Energy on Flutter makes sense. Okay. Speed Booster is pretty reasonable for me to handle. Gonna go for a, I guess a Light Screen immediately. Yeah. I'm gonna go for the light screen. Just go for protect. If I remember right, this is Terra Fire King Gambit. So that is a huge threat I gotta make sure that I'm cautious of. I do have Terra Water, but if I Terra Water, I do become vulnerable to freeze dry from a Glastriere. So I'm gonna have to keep in mind. They could double my Sableye, which that would be. I mean, that's risky if I do go for Heavy Slam in the Flutter Main immediately. So they might not go for it. Uh, probably a safer place to reflect plus heavy slam the flutter. I might be able to live the moon blast from the flutter, but mm, unsure. We are going to see the tear immediately. All right. So this should be probably the King Gambit, I'd imagine. Yep, King Gambit. Going to be into Terra Fire. Is it going to go straight for Terra Blast or are you going for something else? We will protect our Glass Tree Air. Light screen. 
Dazzling Gleam. Okay, we'll be able to tank that. Okay. Low Kick. Did it not have Terra Blast? Maybe that was a different King Gamut, but that, that's fine. I'm going to go for Reflect and just Heavy Slam the Flutter Main, I suppose. Because I can get a boost off Flutter Main with my Grim Nay, and then if Sableye goes down, or I can... I can go for Quash next turn, which is also like a really good option. I also have Kumfe in the back that can still go for Floor Healing into the Glass Tree so we should be pretty safe, assuming no flinches from Iron Head specifically. So I think they went for Low Kick to cover Terror option. Thousand Gleam gonna come out, we'll be able to tank with both. Iron Head, okay. It's a fearful factor. Okay, nice. No flinch. So a heavy slam will pick up the knockdown flutter main. Excellent. Don't know if we can knock out the King Gambit. That's a good question mark. I guess we'll find out afterward. I'm more concerned about what's coming out as the next Pokemon. What is coming out? Looks like we'll live an Iron Head from the King Gambit as well. The next turn. So we can focus on whatever is coming in because it can't Terra and might be vulnerable depending on what slot. It could be a Bomb of Snow though. If they have a Bomb of Snow, they could get a Aurora Veil. Was it Helping Hand a Bomb of Snow? I mean, it was Boost Energy, Flutter Main, Special Attack Boost, or, or Choice Specs Iron Bundle. Also coming out, all right. I think I want to deny... I think I'm just going to taunt the Obama Snow and just protect the last year. If I have to sack my Sableye, that's fine. I get free switch into Kumpay, so that's always acceptable. Just going to always deny your Roar Belt going up. And they go for Blizzard. Okay, that's perfectly acceptable. Because now I just get in a free switch to my Pumfei. And I go for the flow of healing into a Glass Trier, And I'm in such a safe spot. So I think they went for that combination. Also, because they gave me the snow boost, I'm really going to be able to absorb attacks, actually. Uh, so that's actually really good. Uh, we're going out into Comfey. Healing up for Glass Trier. Glass Trier is going to be a monster in this. So we'll go for Floral Healing into the Glastrier, and we're going to go for a High Horsepower into the King Gambit. Because I'm not super concerned about Abomasnow, I'm more concerned about, like, its partners. Because if you can't get up Aurora Veil, like, this Abomasnow is not doing any good damage to my uh, Glastrier. So Floral Healing. Going to have that priority. We're also the fastest thing, but still. Bloods are going to come out. And as you can see, not really that much damage. They go for Iron Head. They're going to start to Comfey, which is awesome. So I don't have to worry about Flinch from the last year. And we are able to get a nice, nice amount of damage into that King Gambit. So fantastic. And I just don't see a reason why I wouldn't do that again. I could Icicle Crash, but High Horsepower is A, more accurate. Icicle Crash covers the switch, but I'd rather High Horsepower. Because if they switch out, it's fine. I'm not taking any damage again from Bomb Snow. They're still only out Taunt turn, but it's not that big of a deal. I'll protect Comfey because you might as well keep Comfey around. Because I could use it to floor heal the Glacier the next turn. Also, once Snow disappears for the Bomb Snow, the Blizzard damage is not really going to be that great. So, huge Glacier showcasing right now as we do protect it. So, like, even outside of Trigger, the Glacier is a problem. Uh, Blizzard going to come out. All right. King Gambit. Iron heading the glass here. As you can see with that snow boost and reflect. So, so little damage. As the high horsepower will take the knockdown King Gambit. Now we have plus two glass here in snow with screens. <laughs> I can't believe they allowed me to get this monster. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what the last was. I was wondering why Bomb of Snow came in. Well, maybe the last Pokemon will help confirm it. Taunt wears off for the Bomb of Snow, so they can go for Helping Hand or they can go for something else. It's Iron Bundle. Ah. So they probably only had Hydro Pump, which was probably more accurate still, but yeah. We go for the Flow of Healing into you and... I'm not really doing that great of damage to Iron Bundle, which is the weird part. 
I think I'm going to actually go for the Heavy Slam and Obama Snow. And the reason I'm going to Heavy Slam the Obama Snow is because I don't even know if plus two Heavy Slam into Draining Kiss would knock out the bundle at this range. So I'm just going to full healing and I'm going to Heavy Slam. We're going to see a Blizzard come out and that should be specs. So if they're locking the Blizzard, I think they just ought to lose the game now. They're going to go for double Blizzard, but you can't freeze a Glass Tree Air, which thankfully you can't. The Heavy Slam into a Bomb of Snow, which is probably the Pokemon that could actually do the most damage to my Glass Tree Air. Okay. Go out into our Caledon, and I think we have this game 100% sealed. I'm going to check the Snow turns in a second just to confirm, but I think we should be good. This is a Light Screen, Last Turn of Snow. Best play is just to double protect. Because Bundle can't have a setup move. You could set up Aurora Veil, but I don't think the Aurora Veil is saving you enough. They are going to go for the Helping Hand Blizzard to try and, I guess, knock out the Arcaladon. This Arcaladon also is max. Oh, wait. Did that Bomba have Aurora Veil? Maybe it didn't have Aurora Veil on this team. Yeah, I don't think it actually had Aurora Veil on this team. Now that I think about it. I think it was Blizzard, Grass move, Helping Hand Protect. Which is fine. I'm going to flash cannon the Obama Snow. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I always feel like it's just targeting a Obama Snow because Blizzard can't win the game. It's too unreliable. But they protect, get Blizzard damage. It gets a little bit awkward. I think I flash cannon the Obama Snow. And he you know what? No, because again, Bundle is just not really doing any damage. I think I just doubled the Obama Snow. If they protect, that's fine. They're going to go for a Blizzard, uh, for a Helping Hand Blizzard, which is okay. Because again, I think I pick up the Knockout. And yeah, Blizzard again. Too unreliable outside of the snow. Misses the Arcaladon target. We're max special defense on the Arcaladon. I don't know if we'd be able to take it. I feel like we can't, we could, because it's not Terra Ice on the bundle. So I think we might have been able to hang on. But yeah, like, uh, like even then, like, last year was knocking out the Obama Snow. And then, like, Blizzard was not beating the glass year and we're able to knock out the bundle with our plus two that we got from Grim Nay earlier. So nice. <laughs> I think it just shows what a monster glass year can be with snow being popular right now. You know, if you bring that snow, I have a glass year under the screens. It's a pretty strong mod because it has good coverage and it's really hard to knock out with screens and comfy, especially. All right, let's go over to games. In game one, wasn't able to get both screens up and lost my scope lens to the knockoff. But our Caledon was still able to get all the important critical hits 50-50s after the focus energy. In game two, had some major hiccups after multiple immediate IV cudgel crits. But thankfully, the later ones didn't crit. And our Caledon was able to break through the remaining grass types in the end. In game three... Last year was an absolute monster in this battle, as with screens plus the snow defense boost, was able to tank attacks easily, avoided getting flinched by Ironhead from the King Gambit, and picked up some knockouts along the way. This team, let me just say, it's really weird. It is very, very unconventional and really does rely on setups and avoid getting crits in some cases because this team is very vulnerable to critical hits as it does play pretty slow, it doesn't have the most immediate offensive pressure. But if you don't get crit and you're able to set up, it can do a lot of work. And you have multiple setup mods that can be used in different situations. If you'd like to try out the team, the rental code is on your screen. Hopefully it is still available. If you'd like to check out the details of the team and the creator, they'll be linked in the description down below. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more VGC content as always.